Watch you guys, got another video here for you. This is just a general chat video on overclocking and will it shorten the life of your CPU or GPU? And this is a heavily debated topic, which is one of those ones that will probably run and run and you're gonna get your people that say, uh, overclocking's fine, it's safe, uh, isn't, I've never had any issues. And then you're gonna get people saying, oh, it kills your hardware and all that sort of stuff. So I thought I'd give you my take on it and what my personal opinion is, okay? And I've worked in computers for a long, long, long time, uh, for many years, and I've built many computers, and I've overclocked loads of computers as well. So let's go through some of the things that uh, that are dangerous for overclocking, and also uh, whether an overclock is safe and stuff like that. And we can sort of discuss it a little bit. So first off, uh, overclocking itself is pushing the CPU or the GPU to higher speeds than what it was designed to do. Now you can buy um, unlocked CPUs uh, from from uh, any source on the internet like Amazon and places like that. And generally uh, it's a bit of a silicone lottery. You get a chip and some of them overclock better than other chips. No chip is the same and it will give you uh, better results for than say your next door neighbor. You could buy one together the same day and you may get a better overclock than what he's getting by a considerable amount. Another thing that to take into account is he may have to, or you may have to put more voltage through to get that overclock stable than what he does. And that's the silicone lottery. You don't know what you're gonna get. So let's talk about what is uh, safe uh, to do with overclocking. So there is a recommended type overclocking uh, level which they will say you could just do this turbo mode and it will give you a little slight overclock and that's their recommendations of safe overclocking now with enthusiasts like myself we like to push the boundaries and push that CPU or GPU to its limits and get more performance out of it and uh, you will get a lot more performance and a big bang for your buck but does that shorten the life of that hardware? And the simple answer is yes, it does. And the reason why is because you are putting higher voltage through that hardware. So when you start pushing voltage through the hardware, the temperatures will start to rise. And of course, once temperatures start to rise, thermals will creep up and of course then hardware will start to struggle and it will fail. Now, how long will it last? Well, it's going to depend on what type of overclock you've got. Now, there's different overclocks. Remember, we was talking about, um, you know, you've got a light overclock, uh, you know, a moderate overclock, a medium overclock, you know, sort of high overclock and an extreme overclock. And people uh, like to overclock at all different sort of levels of their CPU or GPU. So depending on what you're doing will depend on the longevity of your hardware. So for instance, if you overclock your CPU as an extreme overclock and you're running that on a daily basis, then that will shorten the life by a considerable amount uh, because obviously you're running maximum voltage through there than what you what you should do. So you should have a safe sort of area. So when you overclock, you don't want to put voltage through for as long as you can because the voltage part is what's going to kill uh, that hardware and also heat is going to kill that hardware. So for a, you want to try and get the overclock as high as possible without putting any voltage through there whatsoever and then start to, in small increments, add voltage to there, okay? And uh, the reason why voltage will kill it is because obviously uh, you're putting higher voltage through that CPU or GPU which is not recommended to do. Now this will also push up the temperatures so if you was running at say 80 Celsius 100% uh, load then that's super hot that means you're running at proper hot temperatures and I've seen people running hotter than that and it will depend on what core or what you know what core you're running hot on because it depends on what how many cores you've got and one of them will generally get really really hot and uh, normally when you're pushing uh, to the extreme that will definitely shorten the life now how long is that going to last it could last for eight, three years now you may be saying to yourself well if I get three years out of it I've had my money's worth because I'm going to be upgrading my hardware anyway 
So there is a really key point. Depends on how deep your pockets are, how often you upgrade your hardware. If you're looking to have this for 10 years, then maybe running it at the super extreme overclock is not the one for you. You may need to knock that down. Another key thing to do is set profiles up. Light overclock, you know, medium overclock, high overclock, extreme overclock. So you can, some people just stay at that extreme level for a short period of time, take snapshots, screenshots, prove that they've overclocked it to that point and then post them on forums and it's their bragging rights and they become known as a really good overclocker. And that's something that I've done over the years and a lot of other people I know that have done over years. So that's something that you can do, uh, you know, just generally to as bragging rights, but I wouldn't run that system on an extreme overclock for long periods, especially if you leave your computer running 24 seven and you do video rendering or gaming all the time on that system, it's not gonna last long. And also it will depend on the ambient temperature. So depending on what time of year it is and what part of the world you live in, it will depend on those uh, things as well. And this could also play a key role. So if you live in a country that's 35 Celsius and that is ambient temperature in your room with no aircon on, uh, then your hardware is going to start to struggle. Do you keep your PC clean? Is it on carpet? Does it got a lot of dust in it? Heat can't dissipate through dust and you will end up overheating all your hardware very, very quickly. What components do you got in there? Have you got good quality components? Did you cheap out on your motherboard and get a mid-range motherboard with less good caps on it and stuff like that? Uh, the power supply, is it one of those ones called Sparkle with a big blue LED on it that when it blows up, it will look like a fireworks display inside your case and it will then blow all your computer components. I see so many people buying cheap branded stuff uh, that's not recognized or got safety protections on it and it when it lets go, it will let go properly and leave a nasty smell. So these are the things that you need to take into account. You want to educate yourself on temperatures and what's sort of safe and what's not safe. So don't just go and uh, take my word for it or someone else's word for it. And some of the YouTubers out there are very, very knowledgeable as well. Uh, but just don't take their word for it because obviously their CPU and GPU and their setup is different to yours. And they may not be running that for long periods of time. And they'll be showing you uh, this, 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 and how to overclock. And of course, eventually what will happen is you'll run into problems. So do your research for that CPU you're using and your setup you've got. Air cooling, water cooling, they're all uh, key roles of keeping that temperature down. A decent airflow case. And you've got to have all the proper stuff, you know what I mean? So don't try and uh, overclock on a stock CPU cooler with a crappy case with no fans in it and expect massive results and it's full of dust in there and you don't clean it out because it's not going to last long. So if you're a hardcore gamer or a hardcore video editing and you do a lot of this stuff on a regular basis and you're running a really super high overclock, then I would say maybe set that down a little bit more moderately uh, to a you know more medium sort of overclock. So the temperatures basically as well take key notes on what what sort of core temperatures you're running at, at all times because you have to monitor these things when you're overclocking. So when it comes to testing your overclock you have to obviously do a burn test a real good proper test of your uh, CPU or GPU uh, and RAM if you've overclocked your RAM as well which you can do. Uh, that's another thing. So if you put in more voltage through than what they recommend on the box when you bought that RAM, then obviously you're pushing the boundaries of that memory. It may be stable for a while, but you may run into problems a little bit later on. So just take into account all those things there. Do your final testing. Leave it running for a good few hours to make sure everything is stable. Uh, you don't have to run it for 24 hours. You know, it's just a general uh, overlook of what, how how stable that overclock is. Keep an eye on the Celsius of them CPU and the GPU. Make sure it doesn't run too high. You can have an overclock that's I've had overclocks that have run for years and have no problems with them whatsoever. But again, it depends on how much you use that computer. Is it locked left on all the time and how high the overclock is and stuff like that. But anyway, I think uh, we've covered just about everything. So just to recap quickly. 
Uh, so heat, voltage, they're the two key main factors, you know, that will determine how long and is it safe to uh, overclock. So just keep an eye on those two key factors there, I would say, and all the other stuff we've covered in this video. Anyway, it's just been a quick chatty video because I haven't had much time today, but basically that's uh, my out outlook on uh, overclocking and does it reduce uh, the lifespan of your CPU or GPU and uh, in my opinion yes it does but it will also depend on uh, a lot of key factors there so if you get five years out of your overclock remember uh, that's not too bad because most hardware in five years time is old hat and you'll be changing it anyway but if you're one of these people that want to keep it for 10 years then just keep it at a moderate overclock and uh, you should be okay. But don't run it at super uh, high level overclocks because otherwise uh, you won't be getting to 10 years. I can guarantee you that. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's just a bit of a ramble there on overclocking. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys. Have a great weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.